do you know that this is uh, the time of a great divine turnaround? How many know that? We're in an incredible season right now in the Lord. You know, we've had so many prophecies about it's not business as usual. We've had many prophecies about new wineskin and about revival and reformation and all these things. And I tell you, I believe it. I believe it. I believe that we are in a time of shift. Somebody say shift. Shift happens. Hallelujah. Good shift. And God is shifting things in, our, uh, in this church, but in our lives. It's not business as usual. Just have a look at what's happening in the world. Everything from Brexit happening, which seemed like it wouldn't happen, and polls were against it, to things like the Chicago Cubs won after 108 years of not winning uh, the World Series, to Donald Trump becoming President of the United States of America. When Hillary Clinton was given an 84% chance of, of winning, come on, God is up to something big, church. You never know that maybe the Maple Leafs will actually win the Stanley Cup. Anybody have faith for that? It would take a lot of faith, but, you know, it's possible. And uh, I just want to recommend that everybody go onto the internet and Google uh, Bill Johnson, why I voted for Trump. I really recommend that. I, I just stand by everything that he said in that article, and I believe that we've just seen a, a great move of God. And may there be more to come, so continue to pray from. Well, what I'm going to talk about today really has to do with a revival mentality or a revival culture. And I believe that God wants to really change our thinking. It isn't business as usual. That there is a shift and a change, even in this time and this season. And he is certainly uh, pouring out more in certain places of the earth. But I believe that we're headed towards a worldwide revival. A worldwide great move of the spirit. Christian refi or revival is defined by Wikipedia as a period of increased spiritual interest or renewal in the life of a church, either regionally or globally, uh, accompanied by mass conversions of non-believers. And then reformation, it really means reforming what is, was in existence or recovery what was originally attended or returning to a clean slate. And so we need to see this revival, we've talked about this before, in us, the church, in us, in our hearts, in our lives, God's people, and then take that fire out there, right? Out into the world. And uh, last week you heard John preach about ecclesia and and about how really the definition of that is the assembly, meaning also the, the church outside the walls of the church building, us out there and how we make a difference. See, this is what God is up to. There's something absolutely shifting you. Know, last year, when the Lord spoke to me, um, uh, it, it, it actually through a movie, uh, if anybody remembers, I shared this story about watching a movie, Woodlawn, and that was the day after the Canadian election, and I wasn't actually so happy about that one. And I remember that I'm in this movie with John. He dragged me to a movie and go see it. or It's on Netflix, Woodlawn, and it is about revival. It's a football team that all gave their lives to Jesus. They witnessed to their rival football team. They all give their lives to Jesus. And there's a move of the Spirit in this community. And I am just weeping in the theater is the Lord speaking to me and saying, that's it. That's the solution. My spirit revival. It's the government of God breaking into society. Come on, somebody say amen. I'm pregnant with this revelation that God is saying it is not business as usual, church. We are in a time and a season that is absolutely accelerating. And God is trying to get us to catch up to him. All right? He, he's trying to wake us up. To his time and his season and what he's doing. Well, I tell you, it's like he, he started to work on my mind because it's like, you know, when we have this defeatist mentality, and I remember, you know, when we uh, went to Stratford in 2003, and I'm like, oh God, the problems seem insurmountable, and the, the city is struggling, and the church is struggling, ah, and the Lord said, I do not send you out to war to lose, I send you out to war to win. Come on. God doesn't send you to fall on your face flat. You might even lose a battle here and there, but we will win the war. Somebody say hallelujah. Read the rest of the book. Jesus wins. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So there's never any defeat in God. 
There's never a defeat of God. And you know, since last year, I just want to say this. There are some amazing things happening in Canada. I don't even know if you're aware of this. Like a place called Steinbeck, Manitoba, population 13,000. Hope I got the right name there. But it has got uh, pr uh, weekly prayer meetings all night. Prayer meetings, the churches come together in this 13,000 population town. One church has 2,500 members, another has 1,500 members, and most of the people are saved. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. That's great to have. <laughs> that's, in, that's in Canada. And then we also have in uh, Hamilton, we have in Hamilton a real move of the Spirit that's been happening since May or around that season. And even in our own church, come on, I think God is up to something. How many feel the water level rising? The water level is rising, and God is wanting us to believe it and have, you know, I just felt like I'm saying even during worship, expect the unexpected. <laughs> expect the unexpected, because God is moving, and God is up to something extraordinary. I go on to talk about, even want to mention about a, a gal by the name of Christ, Crystal Lavelle. She is a friend of mine, but she is taken uh, into schools. It's called I Am Compelled, but she's taken into schools, the Righteous Foundations of Canada. And she is seeing doors wide open to this message of our Righteous Foundations, calling kids from kindergarten to grade 10 to Righteous Foundations. And teachers are just loving it, and doors are flinging open. Light Up Your World is another one. We're going into the schools and teaching biblical principles and it is happening in our nation. Did you know I just read an article that said that there's 22 mega churches in Canada. That means over 2,000 in attendance. And they're continuing to grow. Churches like even Broadway Church in Vancouver, where there's been noted, you know, so much ungodliness in Vancouver. This church has grown 2,000 now. And they have 20,000 come to their annual Christmas celebration. We have a, a church in Toronto, downtown Toronto, called C3. They began in Australia. There's now 11 churches across Canada of C3. The one downtown Toronto is four years old and has 800 in attendance. Catch the Fire Central is also uh, the young adult campus that we have is growing tremendously. Don't let anybody tell you that people aren't, you know, loving Jesus or millennials are turning away from Jesus. Millennials are actually turning back to Jesus. Do you know Hillsong? Hillsong, New York, they line up around, around the corner for two hours to get into their service on a Sunday. Hallelujah. Well, let it be, God, and give us more of this. And we could go on and on just to talk about things that are happening. But outside the walls of the church, God is moving as well as inside the walls of the church. And I just want to inspire us here for a moment about the fact that we can all make a difference and carry a revival culture into wherever we go, into the school, into the workplace, into the streets, whatever it is that God's called you to do, he's asking you to bring him there. Holy Spirit in there. You know, I do not recommend you go see this movie. I did go see this movie, but because it's so bloody, it's called Hacksaw Ridge. It's a Mel Gibson film that is out uh, last weekend. What an incredible movie, although I'm just not, you don't hear me saying go see it, okay, because there's a whole lot of blood and a whole lot of guts, uh, because it's a war story. There's a Christian man, a Christian man uh, who was a conscientious objector in the Second World War. He did not want to bear arms, but he wanted to go and still help the cause of the war. And in Okinawa, in the, uh, one of the fiercest battles with the Japanese in, in the Second World War, this guy goes into battle with no gun, no ammunition whatsoever. His, his sole purpose is to follow God and to be used of God. And at first they're like trying to write him off, trying to get him out of the army, saying that he'll just be a nuisance. And that guy in one battle ends up saving 75 lives. Come on. That's taking your faith. That's taking the Holy Spirit right into the battle. <laughs> taking wherever, you know, it's like that's what it should be. God in us. God in us proving even to the world. We owe the world a demonstration. We owe the world a demonstration of his goodness, of his grace, of his mercy. We are called to be shining lights wherever we are. And I want to talk about the power of being number two for a moment. The power of being number two, because not always do you run a business or do you run a company or a school or whatever. And you know what? I'm not even, I don't, I'm not saying that Donald Trump is a Christian, but thank God for somebody like Mike Pence next to him. If anybody knows who that is, that is his running mate, who is a born again man who really honors the Lord. 
And do you know that there's power in being number two? By the way, Summit Ministries is advertising for American Christians to send resumes for positions to be filled in the Trump administration because they're saying that there's unusual open doors for believers in this administration. Well, th thank God. Lord, let Christians infiltrate society to serve and to be lights wherever they are. The power of being number two, like Joseph was, like Esther was, like Daniel was. You know, some are called to influence Babylon from within. From within, to be a light, a shining light. I don't think it's always easy, but I love this, this quote Bill Johnson says, but there must, God will open doors for more and more believers to get planted deeper and deeper in the ungodly systems of the world, but there must be a difference in their personal lifestyles. Daniel did not let himself be, uh, uh, you know, be defiled by the king's food, did he? He stood out. He didn't compromise his prayer life. He didn't compromise anything, even when he was you know, thrown into the lion's den. Isn't that incredible that God shut the mouths of the lions for such a man who did not compromise? Some of you, you're in ungodly workplaces. You're even, I even wonder, I feel like I hear somebody, I feel the Lord saying that, that some uh, are considering quitting because it's just so hard. What about just inviting the Holy Spirit to turn the whole thing around? Come on. You know, in the end, God will bring justice. It's, it's true. You hold your course in the storm. Love wins at the end of the day. Love wins at the end of the day. It's the word of God. Love never fails. Devotion. Uh, to that job or person must be based on the one who has assigned you, not on the purity or lack thereof of the one you serve. And I'm sure there's some very ungodly bosses. I remember John in the bank, you know, with bosses that when he was a bank manager, the district manager would come every so often and say, John, what is with this people crying in your office for heaven's sake? It's about mortgages and RSPs. Why are people crying in, their off in your office? They're like, well, they're telling me their marital problems. Their marital problems has nothing to do with mortgages. You know? and, and there's John, you know, being a pastor in the bank just because he couldn't help it, you know. And so let, let the Holy Spirit will up inside of us that we can't help but be the pastors in that office. Come on. The lights in that office, the one that people come to for prayer, come to because they need a healing. Let's stand out. I'm not saying it's always easy. I think there'll be people that don't like you. Does anybody have anybody that doesn't like you in this place? Or am I the only one? Come on. But we don't live our lives by who doesn't like us. We live our lives by the one who defines us. I am defined by my Father in heaven. That's my worth. That's my self-worth. That's how I'm feeling good about myself is what my father says. So in, uh, in that workplace, the power of number two, I remember that line in that uh, movie of the big fat Greek wedding, you know, about there might be a head out there, but the neck turns the head. Come on. The power of being number, how many number twos do we have here? Come on, stand up wherever you are. You're, the, you're maybe the second or whatever. You're under somebody else in your office, in your business, in your job or workplace. Just stand up wherever you are. You're, you're not the top dog, but you're, you're in it. Come on. Lord, I pray for the fire, the influence that these ones bring into the workplace, God, the shining light. And Lord, I pray that you would turn around. I see a turning around of difficult situations in the workplace, just where it's been difficult or where you've been misunderstood or persecuted. God is about to bring promises around in Jesus' name. Come on. He's about to turn it all around because he's the God of the great turnaround. <laughs> And we are seeing that in the natural. We're seeing that in the spirit. God is the God of the turnaround. Did you know in the book of Acts there were 40 notable miracles and only two of them were in the temple? Only two of them were in the church at that time. Most of them were out there in the streets. In the old covenant, it was this. It was like if you were touched by a, a leper, you were unclean. In the new covenant, Jesus changed that, didn't he? Jesus touched the leper and the leper was made clean. There's a difference. And now we know, and I'm not saying, by the way, if, if, if don't be marrying somebody. If you're not married, don't marry somebody who's not a believer. Okay, that's, that's the Bible. But let's say that you are married to somebody who's 
uh, not a believer. Did you know the Bible says that that believing spouse sanctifies the unbelieving spouse and those children are holy? Because there's a dynamic here we got to get a hold of that the spirit of God in us or the light of God in us is greater than the darkness. I just oh, my, honor my mother who prayed and prayed. I think it was 40 years that she prayed for my dad to be saved. And you know what? He's saved. And now all of my siblings are believers in Jesus. Well, from the prayers and the faith of my mother. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. How we can... Turn it around. Oh, God, listen to this Bill Johnson quote. I grew up in a time when it was typically thought that anyone who really loved God passionately should be a pastor, a missionary, or an evangelist. It was not even questioned. If someone had an unusual passion for God, it was normal to send them to a foreign land to serve. I'm sure there were some cases where that was the right thing to do. It is the underlying concept that I have a problem with. The, this approach means we automatically removed our most influential and passionate people from community life. Passion breeds passion. By sending them far away, we removed the leaven of passion from our business community, our educational system, and the rest of our culture. How tragic and completely unnecessary. But with the idea that everyone is a minister, uh, God was going after our ideas about the secular and the sacred. The notion that ministry is sacred and that work outside the church is secular would have to change. The lines we had always drawn between the two would have to be erased. The significance of the call is not found in the assignment. It is found in the one who called us. Amen and amen. The line, it is sacred when you're there and the spirit of God is in you. You know, last night I was uh, at the, uh, the horse show at the Royal Winter Fair with my daughters. And uh, it's incredible because here's this place just, just filled with people. And all of a sudden there was a, a horse that was doing this incredible dance. It was phenomenal to watch. And this woman was singing while the horse was dancing, saying, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And you guys know that song? Oh my goodness, it's like the presence of God hit the whole place. And I'm like, God, you are in the horse ring for heaven's sakes. You are here. The most valuable player of the Chicago Cubs, I'm not really a baseball fan, but the most valuable player of the Chicago Cubs is a born again, strong believer who gave all credence to Jesus Christ for his MVP status. Come on, let's get God everywhere we go. You know, I had this most amazing uh, um, journey. I, so I was in France and Norway and in England. And uh, on my way to France, I was leaving from the Montreal airport. And I'm sitting in my seat uh, reading my Bible. And this young man comes and sits next to me. He's about 30s, early 30s. Uh, he says, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, is it, uh, can I talk to you? And I said, yeah. He said, is that a Bible? I said, yeah. And he said, well, why would anybody read the Bible? He said, <laughs> said, I'm an agnostic, and, and by the way, if God is good, then why is there starving children? I'm like, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Haven't even left the gate yet. <laughs> All right, Jesus, help me. So started in the book of Genesis and said, well, you know, here's Adam and Eve, and they have free choice. And uh, God doesn't make you a robot. He makes you with free choice. And there is evil, and there is a very real devil, and blah, 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 blah. And I'm going on to, like, 2 Corinthians 4, where the God of this age has blinded the eyes of those who are perishing, but those who have the light of truth have the light of the gospel shined in their hearts. We are now taxiing, okay, taxiing to the runway. And this guy says, how can I know that light in my heart? I'm like, oh, my goodness. This is so easy. We are taking off. As the airplane is taking off, and by the way, this guy is a, he is a uh, cyber security expert from Nice, France, who was in the terrorist attack. Anybody remember that when the guy drove the truck? He was in that, and he was in Ottawa as a top consultant of cyber. This guy is smart, okay? He's super smart. And here we are taking off as he's giving his life to Jesus, praying the sinner's prayer. We hadn't even had the seatbelt light turn off yet, and this guy gets saved. Come on. I love this stuff. God, you are awesome. 
And then the next two hours is spent, he says, okay, tell me about end times. I'm like, oh my goodness. So I'm going to the 70 weeks prophecy, abomination of desolation, antichrist. This guy is taking his phone and taking pictures, pictures of my Bible. He's like, wait, wait, I got to, he's taking pictures of my Bible. I'm like, you will buy a Bible, right? He said, yeah, I will buy a Bible. I'm like, God, I love this stuff. Come on. You know what? Carol Arnett, um, a few weeks ago, was in Brittany with John and, and was preaching. And do you know, 150 people came to salvation in one meeting. The fish are jumping into the boat, church. And they're just waiting for us to open our mouth. You know, sometimes I miss opportunities, to be honest. I think I missed an opportunity last night at 11.30 um, in the streets of Toronto as I'm picking up my other daughter uh, who was volunteering in the Toronto Convention Center. And this girl who was with her just said, you know, y your daughter's so nice. And and, and by the way, you guys are so nice, and, and we're, it's freezing. She's got this, like, strapless dress on because it's a fancy do. And she's like, you guys are so nice in this busy street. And I'm like, yeah, you're nice, too. I, I really like you, and thank you very much. And, and I'm like, all I can think of is i got to get these kids home. It's nearly midnight. got to preach tomorrow. And then this girl is just standing there, and I'm like, God, I think I missed an opportunity. Because this girl was just so undone by my daughter's niceness. You know what, church? Come on. I really feel like the Lord is saying that he, we are now in a new season of influencing the world unlike any other time that we have uh, or history. Come on. It's because there's a great harvest of souls coming in. Ah, there's a great harvest of souls coming in that God has appointed. And he's calling us to believe and have a revival mentality. It's not business as usual. It is a new wineskin. It is a new day. And it is God saying, open wide your mouth and I will fill it, says the Lord. The mighty rushing wind that came at Pentecost, 3,000. Our trip, we could talk about revivals of history, which I don't have time to do. But let me just say this, that most of them, they, it affected society. It went outside the walls of church, Geneva. So pleased to see my daughter came to see me. She lives in Geneva. Do you know that that city of Geneva was so turned around under John Calvin's preaching that all of the citizens of Geneva signed a document that was put up with the city council to say Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. That's how that city got so turned around. We're going to see it again in our day and in our hour. Ah. Oh. On and on and on. We could talk about the Hebrides revival and the, you know, the coal miners whose streaks down their face because the, their tears would wash away the coal. We are headed to something even much greater than that. We are headed to worldwide revival. And I believe the water level is rising. What a beautiful, amazing anointing in this place this morning. I love this church. I love all of you. It's an amazing, amazing place. Expect it to go even deeper. Expect more. God is giving us the broken, the lost, the hurting. Okay, how do we cultivate a revival culture? Number one, the power of the Holy Spirit. There is no revival without the Holy Spirit. Get to know the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with his presence. Number two, the thinking shift, the revival mentality, the victory mentality. Big God, itty bitty devil. <laughs> Big God, itty bitty devil. Romans 2, 12, uh, 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Number three, prayer and worship. The vertical focus, God must come first. And as we read, and will, you will do your homework, won't you? Psalm 67, as we read, as we praise him, the nations know that there is a God. As we praise him, Malachi 1.11 says, From the rising of the sun, even to its setting, my name shall be great among the Gentiles in every place incense, which is the prayers of the saints, the worship of the saints, shall be offered to my name, for my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord God. Fourthly, signs and wonders. Worship team, you can come on back up. They've been working hard today. Signs and wonders and miracles in a revival culture that needs to be regular expectation of the miraculous. Regular expectation of the miraculous. We are to expect miracles. We are to pray for miracles. We are to go for miracles. Pray for the headache. Pray for the backache. Pray for whatever. God is changing our thinking to see that he wants to heal more, it seems, than we want it. Because sometimes we're just thinking, I got to get an Advil. <laughs> and I love doctors. By the way, we have such an awesome doctor in this church by the name of Dr. Jimmy Poon. Where are you, Jimmy Poon? I thought I saw you this morning. 
Um, Because he's got a house of prayer right in his doctor's office. I love it. Hey, Jimmy, there you are. Got a a house of prayer in his doctor's office. I love it. Come on, Holy Spirit, regular expectation of miracles. So we honor the medical profession, and we also know that there's a God who heals. And number five, salvation. The gospel is preached. Because when Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, therefore pray the Lord of the harvest. So in a, a revival mentality or revival culture, we are to believe that people are going to come to know our Savior, that they want Him, they need Him. A regular expectation of miracles, and the greatest miracle of all is the miracle of salvation. Let's all stand up. God, we ask that you would break in. God, we ask that you would come. You would change our thinking that you would shift things in the workplace. How? The great commandment, the most important thing we could ever do is to love the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, strength. But the second is the great commission. And the great commission is this, go. Go. Short, sweet, go. Go across the street, Go into the workplace, go across the world, if that's your call, but go. Open your mouth. Let God use you. The glory of God inside of you infect. Whoa. Everywhere you go, everywhere the soles of your feet go, I see a divine turnaround in workplaces. Workplaces getting turned around, the atmosphere changing. You know, when I was, I I had to fly in and out of Amsterdam, and I saw from the airplane these huge greenhouses, and I could actually see the colors, like tulips, growing in these greenhouses. Amazing. Because the the atmosphere in a greenhouse is different than the atmosphere out, because of how, you know, it's controlled through temperatures. And, and I just feel like the Lord's saying, be like a greenhouse and affect that workplace, affect that school, affect wherever you are. It has a greenhouse effect. It doesn't have to be the same as what's going on out there, but it's like you in that place, turning it with an atmosphere for growth in the spirit. How you can grow tulips in December, in a greenhouse. Ho, 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 ho. Come on. This is a day of the great turnaround. This is a day of expect the unexpected. God is about to turn it all around, turn it all around, turn it all around, turn it all around. Come on, our God, our God, our God, oh God, great is our God. You know, I just want to, I want to make a call for people that you know that you need to see a shift in your workplace, and maybe your family as well, your school, that you need a dose of the Holy Spirit this morning to just fill you, because we need the Holy Spirit to fill us, to fill that atmosphere. Come on, if that's you, just come on up here. Just, it's not about who prays for you, it's about you and God. Just, just worship for a moment up here and just say, God, here I am. Okay. Okay, I say yes. How about you all pretend you're Isaiah? Here I am, God, send me. Here I am, God, touch my lips with a coal from the altar in heaven. Here I am, God, use me. Use me, fill me, anoint me. Students, there are students here. God, in your school, God in your classroom, prayer happening around the lunch table. Don't be afraid to say you're a Christian. I'll be a fool for Jesus. Here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. Here I am, send me, Jesus, here I am, send me, here I am, send me, anoint me, God, 
Fill us, God. Anoint us, God. Fill us. Yes. 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 The answer is yes, God. Here I am. Here I am. Just you and God. Just close your eyes. Just focus on Him. Yes. Yes to the assignment. Yes to the task. Yes to getting out of the boat. Yes to the fear of God above the fear of man. Yes. I say yes to be used of you. I say yes, God, to revival in my church. Yes. But revival in my school. Revival in my workplace. Revival in my neighborhood. Revival in my family. It's the day of the great turnaround. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. We say yes. Here I am. Here I am. Send me. Here I am. Here I am. Send me. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come. I ask that you would dose, just overflow, just immerse your people, immerse your people in your glory, immerse your people in the fire of your presence, tongues of fire come, tongues of fire come, send your fire Lord, send your fire, send your fire, send those, the coal, touch our lips God, from the altar, in heaven, see us, we see us, we see us. Sing this, sing this song to For the sake of the world, but like a fire to me, light a flame in my soul forever. sake of the world burn like a fire in me for the sake of the world burn like a fire in me light a flame in my soul for every eye to see for 
for the fire of the Holy Spirit that burns in us. And we submit our thinking to you. We submit our mind to you where we've had you too small in our eyes. Forgive us, big God, God of the universe. Come, use us mightily in this nation and in our workplaces and wherever we put the soles of our feet. We say yes to the working of the Spirit in us. We say yes, opening our mouth. We say yes, praying for the sick. We say yes to sharing our testimony. We say yes to serving, to serving, serving. And let the light of the gospel speak through our lives. Speak through our smile. Speak through our countenance. Let the light of the gospel shine forth. Oh God, I pray. One more time. this place today I want everybody to look up and read the sign the verse through the doorway and he said to them go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation preach through your life preach through your witness preach through your service preach through your testimony, preach through your words. Go in the power of the Holy Spirit. Give Jesus a shout.
forsaken the world by love.